Well, welcome back to Big Board. It's uh, not too early on a July 4th, so happy July 4th. I'm not sure when you'll actually get to see this video, but uh, happy July 4th in any case. Wanted to share with you a few different bits and pieces. We have, uh, let's see, we've got the German forces set up pretty much how I think I want them. It's uh, a little, obviously a little unclear as to uh, how this will all pan out. I got a couple of donkeys here that need to get placed somewhere and I'm not sure where to put the trucks based on need. I put a little extra supply closer to the front over here where this, <coughs> excuse me, where this white cube is. And I'm, I'll be putting, I've got some white cubes put on the board to show where uh, your supply dumps are. It's kind of the typical thing I do with games. I use some mnemonics to help me remember where things are when I'm playing solo. Uh, one thing I did want to mention is that uh, I posted a picture just recently of the invasion forces and the, the landing craft and things like that. And I, I felt like there was something wrong because I had uh, about two and a half divisions left over that couldn't fit on the landing craft. And there's a very, very simple reason for that. When we're doing uh, transportation on these vehicles, okay, so here's a, here's a landing craft with two re or regimental equivalents or one regimental equivalent. And uh, these here, this is a regiment here. That's, so that's one regiment, which just takes up one re of space. But in the rules, in the main rules, the body of the rules, it says, uh, if you have a movement rate of between three and six, I believe, and it's a foot movement rate, uh, that counts for half uh, the cost. So this is half a re. So that's one and a half. And th these three here would make uh, another one. Now if I had, uh, ideally, if I had another, uh, let's see, another battalion, that would, four battalions would make up uh, one re. So that'd be one, two, three, four. Uh, five for the truck with an SP on it, and six. So that'd be six, three, five, six. So see now I've got one extra. I've got one extra and I can carry that uh, supply. So that I've just got myself an extra, uh, well, in fact, I've got even more space than that because I've got these two guys here, which would save us uh, some more space. So I have excess capacity there. That was really badly explained, sorry about that. <laughs> That's early still. And I was up super late. So uh, I'll have excess capacity there because we have three uh, three brigades and they are worth two, four, six. They are worth one and a half re. Two and a half, three, four, four and a half, five. There's five re there, six, seven, eight re there. And so not including the three, let's move that. There's two, there's eight right there, so I'll have an extra one there. So you can see I'm going to pick up probably three, three or four landing craft across all of these guys here. So that was, uh, that was cool. I'm glad I took the time to go back to the rules and just double check stuff. You know, I haven't played OCS in quite a while, uh, so, and I've never done uh, landings or used the naval rules or anything like that. Uh, I thought I'd talk very quickly, if we can, about landings. The historically... <clears throat> there was a, a kind of a kind of a, a planner's plan. Uh, if you read the game notes, and uh, I've been reading also, I don't have a lot of books on the Sicily campaign per se, and I'm sure there's some great ones out there. But I read uh, this, The Last Cavalry Man. I think I mentioned this in the previous video. Uh, Lucian Truscott was a cavalry officer. It, I guess. Uh, I'm trying to think of the exact time period that he was in the cavalry prior to being promoted. Basically, he worked in uh, Supreme Headquarters in Europe and then moved. Uh, so he was a, a cavalry officer situated in Arizona somewhere and then moved to Supreme Headquarters for World War II and then... Uh, uh, participated in the Tunisian invas invasion and uh, I think he had control of the third division there I'm not sure but net of all that is that he migrated no it was a different division and then he was promoted and then uh, 
went up through the ranks a little bit and promoted to run the third division and was actually in charge of the third division as they, they landed and helped plan the invasion uh, <clears throat> of this island, right? Now, when the, when the, so when the plan, while they were busy running the Tunisian campaign, uh, the original landing uh, plan was for the British to land over in Gala here, Avola, and around to Avola, kind of all over the place. Where's Avola? It's over here somewhere, which you can't see just off screen to your right. Pacino and Pazalo, kind of uh, this hub over here on the right hand side, kind of spread out. And then there was supposed to be a uh, secondary invasion uh, in Palmero by the USA on day two or three and Cata Cata Catania uh, by the seventh army I'm oh, sorry by the eighth army um, on day plus three while the the US forces were supposed to land at Cialia and Marinella I don't even know where Marinella is uh, that was the original plan so that got kiboshed actually by, by by Montgomery and if you watched uh, there's some movie about it uh, he apparently comes up with a solution in the mirror and while that doesn't happen didn't really happen uh, I think this is where they're, they're going to land over here is that right? yeah over here that's where the US was going to land here and further around that way so kind of spread out all over the place. And the, the, the forces then kind of rationalized this plan and, and changed it such that uh, this uh, little promontory, promontory here, Pacino, they, they would land uh, in this area and uh, the 50th and 51st divisions would land in uh, Avola and Cassis, uh, Cassis, uh, where is it? Cassibili, Cassibili this area. So very, a much narrower range and so, uh, so spread out. And then <clears throat> the uh, US landed uh, in between uh, Lakata and, Ga and Gala and kind of and Gala and kind of uh, took on that, that range of area. What I'm gonna do, just because of the way this is set up, you can see this kind of this arc of forces and I know that there's some pretty strong forces set here. I'm going to try and avoid a, a massive battle at the very beginning. And I'm actually going to use uh, Lakata as the as one uh, flank and then uh, Capo Bianco as the other flank and land and try and land and take this area, this port, Porto M. Padolce, Dolce, Dolce, would that be right? Dolce, 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 uh, whatever, here. And then the Lakata. So that would give me two port bases to start you know, bringing in reinforcements. And we'll put an LST either here or here, which will give us a, a um, uh, an LS trace supply location. And try and you try and create a a, uh, a front that looks something something along that arc there. Uh, that way, if we can land some. Uh, paratroopers here at Kanakati and possibly up in the near the Plantani River here that this would give us a, a reasonably solid foundation for trying to uh, build a decent perimeter and not have German armor racing down the highway here and, and pounding on us uh, from moment number one. Over on this front here I'm being a little more audacious with the <clears throat> the British and spread them out a little further than perhaps I would like, but we're going to use the uh, Iparari River here as a as a line and land in this area. Try and land a LST here, uh, capture this port here of Pazalo, and then uh, to land at Avalo Avola as well over on the right hand side here, and look that really look for a a buffer zone that takes in this mountainous range and, and kind of does that. Uh, we'll probably bring first airborne in. This is a tough area to land in here. There's uh, heavy German forces right here. And what I want to do by, by landing uh, this over this way and maybe bringing an airborne in here somewhere 
or what I'm hoping will happen is that this will cause a, a, a tough choice for the Germans. Do they go left or do they go right? Uh, which threat will they address first? Or will they split their forces and address both? Or will they pull back? Or what will happen? Uh, and I'm, I think that might be the best way to mitigate the threat of this entire... Uh, look at that donkey. He looks pretty tough, doesn't he? There's two donkeys there, in fact. Uh, HG's... Uh, you know, a division here, and then we've got we've got more of uh, more heavy armored forces here as well that can cause a threat, which are also in reserve and ready to rock and roll, because you can start in reserve, you know. And there's some guys out there. Okay, so that's kind of the plan. We'll see how it goes. Uh, there are some interesting rules and restrictions. You know what? I'm not going to talk about any of that now. Let's. Uh, so that's that's kind of the the plan. I think we've got the rules squared away for landing. The LRP, how landing resource points are allocated and, and the movement to and from the beaches and things like that. I don't know if I can reuse these landing craft. I, I can't see anything anywhere that, that tells me what I can and can't do with these things. So I'm assuming everything either has to get to the beach in the first landing or... Uh, or... Uh, we create a we we capture a port, which doesn't seem to make sense because I know at later stages uh, Patton did these bounding landings up the up the coastline with uh, Lucian's uh, Lucian Truscott's third division. He, I don't know where exactly it was. Where if I can see a town name, I can perhaps I think Capodio Orlando was one of the later later landings they made, but uh, he was making landings trying with battalion sized forces trying to get behind the enemy in these mountain ranges here. So there should be <coughs> landing craft available. What I'm thinking happens if, uh, when we do this al this alternative roll, this landing roll basically, that we, we make a roll for these guys and if the, if the landing craft survive, then I think we move them back to these NRP locations and then they can go back to the floating box, floating forces box, where they could be loaded the, the following turn and, and landed and et cetera, et cetera. All that sort of good stuff. All right, that's all I got for you. That's all I know right now. And we'll, uh, we'll begin some gameplay later today.